we are in we we are in game two of this matchup between Amazon Amazon and Amazon Prime. We're in champ select. Yeah, and that's uh, we do have on the the sides have swapped here. Of course, for game two on the blue side now is going to be Amazon 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 Prime on the red side here. And we see uh, that Sejuani ban coming out immediately from the red side. Yeah, want to make sure that playmaker is not available in this game too. <laughs> yeah, and it looks as though Amazon Amazon. I don't think they feel, they. I, it looks as though they don't feel that anyone that Amazon Prime played last game is worthy of a ban because they're going with essentially the same bans as last game. The Vi, the Hecarim, and if this is the Nar, this is that this is just so much um like BM right here. Like we don't <laughs> we don't we don't even respect your picks from last game. We're gonna ignore them. You can have the same exact team composition and we will beat you again with it. Well, yeah, I mean, certainly... There's the oh my god, what? <laughs> this is uh, this is honestly a first for me. This is probably like one of the first times uh, a team has just blatantly ignored the picks of a uh, of a team in a best of three. Yeah, well, you know, I mean, we're talking about what they would have changed too, and when they banned out that Callista second, I probably would have opted to save that Callista for the third ban because that Callista did show up really strong in the last game, and I understand perhaps wanting to take it out so you can uh, uh, prevent the blue side from getting uh, what you feel is a strong champion right now, but that could have been a ban they drew away from the NAR if they had kept that unavailable but they actually opted to take it out themselves in their second pick here, so I'm not sure I necessarily agree with the placement of that band, uh, but we'll see how it works out. Perhaps they have a different composition in mind here. Uh, yeah, and again, I am cheap. You take away the number one jungler in the current meta, he's just gonna take the number two jungler in the current meta. Alternate, alternately, Gragas and Juani are either one and two, depending on um, who you ask, but a huge, a strong jungler right now, so he is, he's definitely going to be showing his stuff on this champion. But you could argue that Gragas actually does provide a little bit more uh, for his team compared to the Sejuani. That's why people see, uh, play him a little bit more. They're still extremely powerful champions, and uh, it's going to be interesting to see what red team Amazon Prime pick up with this. The Malka and Nidalee. Yeah, that, Malkai this, in the this, top this, lane. This, Talking about standard meta picks here that are really strong right now, Maokai, of course, fits that bill to a T. Um, and, you know, I'm, I'm interested to see what the rest of the blue side picks are going to be because, you know, you were mentioning the differences between that Gragas and Sezwani. One of the key differences is in team fights that Gragas is a lot about separating out the enemy team, using that ultimate to give them poor positioning, whereas Sezwani is trying to capitalize upon poor positioning here. Uh, we might see a more pick-oriented team follow up that progress here. Uh, I mean, the bands, being all three of the same bands here this time, I wouldn't expect to see too different of a team composition. It looks like they're largely going to stick with what worked. But that progress might be a sign that they're going to shift their place they do, again, too. They did leave Sivir up, so we might just see the Sivir come out again uh, from Amazon Amazons. It, it's so, it turned it so well with the Gragas because it allows you to just get in uh, closer to the back line to throw that explosive cast and kind of mess up the positioning of the key targets and they don't lock it in just yet. instead they're just going to be picking up the mundo again from last game so it seems as though the only the only thing that's been changed so far is this Kragas from the Sejuani yeah, so absolutely. I mean the team comp is going to be played effectively the same the ultimate's not the explosive cast not going to be used for the immediate engage like the glacial prison from Sejuani, so he's going to have to be a little bit more careful with it. Meanwhile, Argonaut Jason hovering over. I think he just I think he just typed in marksman and now he's just hovering over all of them. Yeah, uh, I was going to say something similar, but that Timo's in that rotation, so I'm not sure. <laughs> no, Timo, Timo's, Timo's under marksman. Oh really? Yeah, <laughs> it's really it, it's weird, but he is. Um, I, I feel as though so far with the Sivir is still such a great pickup, especially since you know that they're going to be playing uh, Lucian. I feel as though it's an obvious choice right now, 
Not if they lock in the Nibia, though. If you're yeah, gonna lock in, Nibia, yeah. Not if you're locking this time Nibia, if you're locking in the Anivia, then I think you pick someone uh, that goes well in the late game as, along with her. So the Jinx and there might it be. Is. Yeah. yeah, there it is. It's either the Jinx or the Vayne. Vayne's a little bit more dangerous to play, especially with a Maokai being on the enemy team. So Jinx, uh, probably one of the more obvious choices if you have the Anivia on your team. So. Yes. And this is going to be an action-packed mid lane here, so we're going to see yeah. the Ezreal lock one for the mid lane. Going to try and apply a lot of pressure to that mid lane early on. Yeah, and Amazon, Amazon, they've, they've essentially went from mid-game team fight to late-game team fight. This is just going to be a huge, huge late-game uh, power spike from them. And if they can effectively win mid game if they can win early game then they can snowball mid game into their favor and late game they automatically win the damage output from wait a minute this is ap ezreal well you know we could it might awesome. this might be a blue let's not get too hyped about that that is possible it is mid lane ezreal never put it past it. I don't care what you <laughs> say this is a blue ezreal please let this be blue e no, no, not ap ezreal i meant ap i meant ap yeah, I think I think it might be more of a blue Ezreal myself because I mean we do have Nidalee coming out of the jungle as well. We've seen a lot of that more damage style Nidalee in the jungle lately, and with Maokai in the top lane as well, he certainly isn't bringing a lot of damage. But that's probably enough ability power damage coming out from the uh, red side here to where you can actually run a double AQ AD comp effectively here. But you know who knows? We might see at least a Trinity Force start from that Ezreal again if you want to apply a lot of pressure to that Anivia early on. With the okay, so the thing with the Ezreal pickup, uh, it, it's alongside picks like the Rumble and the Azir, is that you have methods of attacking the backline extremely safely. Like you don't have to put yourself in danger to hurt the backline. Like Rumble has the Equalizer, uh, Azir has the Sand Soldiers, Ezreal has his ultimate, and being on such a low cooldown and doing such a high amount of damage, if you force away the Jinx or the Anivia from the fight, like, before the fight even begins, you've essentially put the fight into your favor and you've you've maybe even won the fight already. Yeah, Because absolutely. they just can't get in. And this is why I really do like the Ezreal pickup against two pretty long-range champions that are, your frontline's going to have a hard time getting onto. The Maokai is going to have to deal with the Mundo, the Bard, and the Gragas. All three of them such a, have such a high amount of utility uh, to keep the Jinx and the Anivia alive. So with the Ezreal pick, it allows him to poke the backline, chunk them down, take them out of the fight, and they can effectively steamroll through whoever is left on the Amazon, Amazon team. And you know that's exactly the kind of composition they're going for because with that Nidalee pickup as well, she's going to be looking to throw those spears right into the back line as much as possible. If her and Ezreal combine uh, trying to sync up their uh, long-range poke from different angles, I mean, Mundo can only block so many skill shots. You know, as big as he is, you know, he's only got so large of a hitbox to protect that Jinx and Anivia. So if they can just land a couple of shots here and there, I mean... It's certainly not the Nidalee of old days, but we've seen that AP Nidalee bring a lot of damage when especially she yeah. lands really long-range spears. So we'll see if she's able to would, uh, actually land those I, on those targets. I would not be surprised to see the Luden's Echo coming up from Dio Diesel. I, yeah, would, I would not be surprised. Um, maybe even... I, 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 would, I would even go so far as to say the first item after jungle item is completed. Yeah, I'm feeling that as well. I believe so. I mean, that's... And one of the things I do want to emphasize as well, all three of those damage dealing uh, targets on the red side, every one of them has a built-in escape. Uh, Nidalee with that pounce, uh, Ezreal with the arcane shift, uh, Lucian with his dash. There's so much ways for them to get out if they are engaged upon that even though they are very large damage dealers and fairly squishy themselves, they are still very safe champions when it comes to these team fights. They're, they can reposition themselves throughout sticky situations perhaps in the jungle. So. Uh, looking from the uh, blue side's perspective here, they're really going to have to land, catch somebody really devastatingly out of position to punish them with Anivia because that Anivia wall not going to have the utility yeah. uh, that and it they usually does. They don't really have that either. The only form of immediate lockdown they'll have is from either the Anivia 
or from the bard. The bard in itself is going to be hard to hit unless it's set up for you, or unless they're uh, hugging a wall. And Nibia can actually lead someone in um, with her uh, wall, and then as they go towards one side of it, just throws out the Q and gets the stun off. Um, but that's only more, only more ex experienced Anivia players even do that. I'm, I don't know exactly how much Leech plays the Anivia, but if it warranted a ban, I'm sure that he's fairly proficient on the champion. Well, yeah, we've seen a lot of uh, previous games here. There's actually an early start off uh, battle here at level yeah. one. They, yeah, There's they can not. They're just barely gonna miss that Anivia. They can't fight level one. Skin of her teeth. They cannot fight level one, especially against the double AD carry. The damage is so high right now, and look at that. Leech is so low. They actually get a stun onto H Gal, but he should be able to survive. Yeah, it's we gonna don't... be a lot of damage on both sides. A lot of targets very low. Of so course, much... Nibia does have that passive available right now. So if Iron Chief though taking so much harassment, they have to back away here. I mean, you just can't risk a game two being lost because of a uh, cheeky level one start here. So they are gonna and... back away and see that uh, vision. That was so smart by Amazon Prime. They never fully engaged. They just constantly disengaged and poked them out so that they were able to whittle down the members of Amazon Amazon, effectively winning them, winning them that pseudo, um, I guess, invade. No summoner spells popped, though. So no one's getting a huge lead. Just well, yet. we actually did see the Ezreal had to flash throughout that engagement. That oh, was quite that's, a uh, messy yeah. engagement. But yeah, that Ezreal, of course, with his uh, Arcane Shift available, not going to matter too much in the early game here. He'll probably be just fine in that uh, short mid lane here. See, uh, opting to start directly onto the red buff here uh, is Gragas. So looking to get an early gank in once he can secure those uh, double buffs early on. Perhaps in the uh, top lane. And right, I love llamas with the Doran's blade. I mean, it's not a surprise to see that on AP Ezreal's. It gives them a little bit of it gives them help when they're farming up in the lane. Um, but he doesn't have any AP ru runes or masteries, so it may not be an AP Ezreal. It might just be that blue Ezreal you were talking about. And if it that if that is the case, then Amazon Prime need to win mid game because that is when they're strongest. Amazon, Amazon, they really can't hope to fight in the mid game because of the double AD carry composition. It's just so strong at that point, and they have to turtle. If Amazon, Amazon wins early game, they snowball into mid game and they can fight on par with Amazon Prime. If they can do that, they'll, they'll need to play safely and turtle into late game where they'll have the advantage. That's when they'll that's when the composition of Prime will start to fall off. Yeah, absolutely. I mean the later the later and later it goes into this game, the more and more time that Jinx is gonna have to turn on, that Mundo is gonna have time to become unkillable and you yeah. know, once you hit a certain point oh. in the game. There's a Larkane shift there, phasing away right after that stun landed from Anivia. So it's yeah. gonna be a little safe in that mid lane, but Grog is right. bringing some pressure to the top lane. And right now, that Diesel did just go back. He has his jungle item, and Iron Sheep has yet to go back, actually. He, he's actually fairly healthy, full health right now, and Isle of Llamas actually may just be caught out. So close to walking to that bush. I, Iron Chief was in. And you know, oh, bottom lane. Argus play and then a po the point blank hook after the play walked up to beautiful play from the Thresh, of course, just threatening the uh, hook as we see actually in the mid lane. There's the Ignite out onto that Ezreal. He still doesn't have that flash available from the level one. That's a lot of damage, but it's not going to be enough. Minions, Nibia. Gonna, gonna have her egg popped by those minions. And then uh, Ezreal actually throwing in a little bit of additional poke. I'm not sure this nearly is going to be able to get the kill here, uh, but. That is the passive down for Anivia for a yeah. long period of time. I love Lava's even had to use heal. He tried so hard to get the kill, but Iron Sheep forced him away just to the pressure that he provided. Really nicely played by him, keeping the Anivia alive for the time being. Uh, though I don't think he expected the Anivia to even die right there. And with the Anivia 
Uh, with her passive being down right now, she has to play so slightly. The main reason why she's allowed to be that aggressive in lane in the laning phase is because she has the backup measure that is her egg. Now that it's down, Ezreal can be so aggressive as much as he wants, and Anivia is really not going to be able to fight back in terms of damage until level 6. And even then, she's going to rely on blue buff to make sure she doesn't run out of mana. So this is looking really nice for uh, Isle of Llamas in the mid lane. Meanwhile, we can always transition over to the side lanes. So, uh, crap out in the top lane, picking up a CS lead, pushing in against Yellow as well. I mean, not not really uh, unexpected. The Maokai should be able to outduel. The oh man, the engage. We see Nidalee. We see Nidalee sitting outside of the ward in the tri brush there. So when she comes in for this dive, it's not going to be anticipated here. Maokai tanking up the turret. That's a lot of damage on Mundo already, but he doesn't have that six available. Nidalee going to miss the spear, so he will be getting out with his life there. Actually, Maokai now under pressure here. Grog is uh, going to force the flash, so Maokai loses that summoner top. Yeah. It'll be a very gankable lane here in the future. Man, and that was just really unfortunate by Dowdyzel. He missed everything in that gank. He only really needed one, uh, like, he just needed, needed one thing to hit, either the trap or the spear, but nothing hit uh, onto Yell right there. So he couldn't jump in, get the reduced cooldown on the pounce. Yeah, we see uh, just briefly ago in that mid lane, we saw already Israel uh, microing against that wall very effectively here, dodging out uh, the zoning in that ultimate out of the Nivea. So already coming into play is the versatility of these picks for the red side here against that Nivea, who uh, is opting to uh, go for that Rod of Ages first, as we've seen, to try and scale up even harder in this late game. Yeah, it's gonna help. It's gonna help her out so much. I see a lot of Anivia's also pick up the tier, so we may see the, that item come out from her as well. Um, like, she relies so heavily on mana, and the tier allows her to scale up into late game just that much better. Tier already on to Isle of Llamas, so he'll just be picking that up. No combat stats onto him just yet past the initial Dorn's Blade. So, Leech gonna have a fairly easy time. Um, for the time being, until I Love Llamas goes back and picks up another damage item, that's when we're really going to see if he's AD or AP. My money's still on AD. Yeah, I'm thinking that it's going to be the AD blue Ezreal uh, with that picked up uh, from the tier here. The uh, Ezreal ultimately not going to land again any harassment onto the spawn lane, but we did see... Uh, a little while ago, that uh, hook uh, from Thresh did force the flash out of guard, so that summoner's spell not going to be available. This is a very dangerous uh, bottom lane here. The Knight doesn't have flash available, but here's Grogus to sort of turn the table. Pop taking so low on that Thresh. Oh. The minion going to be a hero and block the zap out of Jinx. And so Iron Sheep. Out alive. Iron Sheep wasn't level 6 yet. If he, had, if he had been level 6, that would have been a kill onto the Thresh. And not only do they force away the Drives because he was fairly low on health, they're just going to transition over to the Dragon and take this effectively for free. There's the Jinx of it going out to spot it from happening, but it's not going to be there in time to attempt the steal. Really nicely played by Amazon Prime right there, turning around the gank into no kills to Amazon Amazon, and as well as, well as taking the first Dragon of the game, First dragon for their team. And this yeah, is where they start the snowball. This is where they're going to be strong. Yeah, unfortunately for the blue side, Jinx uh, having that ultimate skirt, his skirt right through the dragon and go to a healthy member as opposed to that Thrush who was very low. So that's going to be the uh, first dragon of the game going over to the red side. And they also have a bit of a gold lead building as well from those uh, minor CS advantages largely uh, in the top lane, that Maokai. H Scout needs to go back. He has no mana, so he's gonna have a really tough time of escaping. And he's he's so aggressive. He wants to go in. Iron Sheep is level six. If he is in range of the explosive cast, it's gonna be a kill. Tosh has gone back. He's bought that sight stone, but no one else in the bottom lane has uh, bought any items. They're sitting on a lot of gold right now, and H Scout really wants this BF sword. 
Yeah, and that Thresh being in the bottom lane might give a little bit of false confidence to this Lucian, who, as you say, is really being aggressive right now, looking to go in, but uh, gonna choose to just back out of the bush there is uh, the Gragas from Iron Sheep here. Gonna go back in to see what he can uh, create as far as plays in other lanes. That blue buff is available to give over to Anivia, so she's certainly gonna want that uh, to be picked up here momentarily. There is a ward to spot it out, though, so we'll see if Nidalee, who is on the top side of her jungle, is going to look to contest that. And... It would be really key for Amazon Prime to deny Anivia the boom buff. Um, they don't have any vision of her making her way to that position if they wanted to, which is really bad. We actually see Diodies are looking for something. Actually, no, that's just going to be the True Shot Barrage from Isle of Llamas looking for it. Yeah, the Ooh. ultimate from Ezreal. Well, I mean, a good attempt, certainly, that you get that cool, low cooldown on your ultimate. It's definitely worth the time steal. And they did get quite closer, but unfortunately for them, that blue did make it play on the one of you. So she's going to have all the mana she needs in order to throw out her ultimate to get that wave clear. Unfortunately, the death sentence is going a little wide right over the, in the shoulder of Anivia. Yeah, and now that she has now that she has her ultimate with the blue buff, she can effectively stall this lane out. Um, continue farming up. She's gonna be, have a much higher impact uh, late game compared to this Ezreal. It looks as though he is AD, has the phage in his inventory right now. So most likely getting the Trinity Force as his item. Actually, we could we could have actually told we we actually could have um, found out if he was gonna be AP or AD looking at the skills that he's been maxing he actually has been maxing mystic shot so that, that's kind of a tell that's ad if it was ap he would have been maxing w yeah that's a good point for sure and we see actually uh back in this bottom lane again is iron sheep waiting for bard to clear out that wood so he's not going to be seen walking into the tri -brush. oh man i love a mid there's the ignite coming out as well so much damage onto ezreal i'm not sure it's going to be enough he's going to be able to make it out with just a little sliver of health available but anivia Stepping way deep forward, actually gonna flash, oh! and that's gonna be first blood! Beautiful Anivia play there, and that's what we expect out of Leech, because Anivia is so strong here, and he's looking to actually try and take it down uh, the Nidalee as well, but meanwhile on the bottom lane, breaking out of fight, H Gal finally gonna be punished for being so aggressive here, we see back in the jungle, Anivia still looking to fight, as the teleport comes in as well to try and give her some relief now that her egg is down. That's so much damage. One single pounce could take her up. That's just going to be Maokai using the Twisted Advance to clean that up and secure the blue buff for himself there. But uh, the bot lane turn is going down during all of this action here. The camera kept jumping back and forth to me, so I could never get a clear look at what was happening. But what I gathered from that was that Leech, it, you got a banner with the Anivia, man. That was insane. First getting the kill onto the Ezreal and then surviving against the Nidalee while she's in egg form is such a huge, huge play. Uh, that was such a huge, huge play for her. And she, while she didn't get the kill onto Diodiesel, she forced her away, not the flash, unfortunately. And meanwhile, in the bottom lane, the Jinx Bard combination may be a little bit too strong for HK and Tosh at the moment. They are up in terms of the items they have, Cloak of Agility, just full components of the Infinity Edge on H Gal's side, Argonaut Jason evening it up right there. So still fairly even in terms of items, however, they have to look for skirmishes. They can't go for full on fights because the Jinx will just win them out with the attack speed that she gets from mini form. Yeah, absolutely. We're seeing a bit of a slugfest happening here in this top zone, but don't be fooled by that as Mundo does have that ultimate available. And, you know, speaking to how uh, clutch those Anivia plays were, remember, this is Anivia who took Ignite and not Heal, so a uh, much more dangerous game for Anivia than most uh, standard Anivias we see here. Showing a lot of proficiency on that champion to be able to survive the Mundo. Under pressure here, that's going to be not enough time with the ultimate running, so just going to be immediately burst down by that Nidalee who's coming in for the gank here. And they're thinking about taking this top lane, but might be forced to back away here because they don't have the minions for it. And that was unfortunate. He had his ultimate too, but he wanted to wait a little bit longer um, before he popped it just to get the maximum amount of heal out of it. But he did end up dying as a result of that. But it's a trade-off. Um, this is just going to help uh, Diesel start ramping up 
has the blasting wand in his inventory right now, so I think he's gonna be getting. That's actually, nah, he can get a multitude of items. No idea. Right there. Tosh will be taking that pink ward out, but this is a lot of damage. So on much him. damage onto the bard, yeah. That single spear doing a lot. Oh, but the iron ship, the ultimate from Grog is missing out there, so. HGL gonna be fine here. The Relentless Pursuit is down though, so he doesn't have the stash available. He's gonna go in all in to try and get that Bard. Bard will flash away just to play it safe there, and he will be going down. He that can... is the top turret going down in exchange though by Malkai. Yeah. He continued to try and kite three members of the enemy team, but he should have just started running away. You can't really hope so to kite. Oh, oh, the oh, spear. Oh, <laughs> I was With watching the for that spear, and she waited for the mystic shot, or the true shot barrage from Ezreal to come out. Uh, and the combo there, gonna be enough to pick up Bart, so a bit of a consolation prize as that dragon does go down. Uh, and meanwhile, meantime, crowd pile in the top lane, he is just pushing that tower like a boss, trying to take it down as fast as possible. And no one on Amazon Amazon is there to immediately stop it from happening. So, this tower is very close to going down. Um, it will not go down right now, mainly because... It's so prepped yeah. for a top lane push later on. I mean, especially if there's some sort of uh, trade for a dragon again. Uh, I mean, they've evened up the dragons now one to one. So if they do want to trade a second dragon over to them for an inner turret in the top lane, that will create a lot of pressure in what is the lane that determines how good the dragon will be later on. So definitely a lot of critical damage into that top lane inner turret. Yeah. So, so far, teams are fairly even. Bit of a gold lead in favor of Amazon Prime at the moment. And there's the Righteous Glory completed by Krautpile. So it's going to allow his team to engage fairly easily they yeah they're gonna be looking for a lot of mid-game team fights when their power spikes are at the highest most likely waiting for isle of llamas to finish up on the trinity force before doing that monomune is is in his inventory right now so it looks as though he's just one of the components of the sheen before finishing that up infinity edge on both of those 80 carries in the bottom lane no lead has really been picked up. The two assists onto Jinx and two kill, uh, two deaths onto Lucian. They're fairly negligible because the gold leads are so close. The crits coming out in the bottom lane in favor of the blue side here as well. Taken solo, actually gonna force the heal. And there's the flash to get the last shot in and she's excited. She will get a second kill. Jinx with the double. Wow, I was just gonna mention too how impressive I was seeing uh, dodging out all those hooks from Tosh on the Thresh. And there's, I mean, that's the benefit of it. If you can never get an engagement uh, to actually try and poke out your enemies uh, and that CC is always down, eventually there's just going to be an opportunity for them to engage upon you. And then, you know, all of a sudden there's a double kill for this Jinx. And now she's going to be hitting her stride into this uh, mid-game very strong, like you were speaking about earlier. That, yeah. Uh, Jinx is going to turn online here much sooner than normal. Yeah, Tains, I don't know what you're doing, man. J Aria Jason will be able to take that bottom lane, second tier tower. And they're actually going to attempt the steal for this blue buff. Can they get it? No, nope, they will not. The smite from I... Wait, what? Why did Iron No, it was a smite it? from Gragas. Uh, it looks yeah. like it was a secure. Why did he... Seeing the mark, seeing yeah, the why mark did he... from the Nidalee on it, probably just going to play it safe there as uh, Anivia already did have a blue buff available. So it yeah, but it's gone. Refresh. It's gone. It was, How much time was on that? Oh, it was, just yeah, okay. It just yeah. ran out right now. So yeah, yeah. Perhaps it was worth a little bit more of a risk there to put that on Anivia because uh, we already saw right there just uh, hitting that recall momentarily. She really does want to go back. She doesn't have uh, much. They can't afford to fight right now. Alive. Yeah, right now, Amazon, Amazon, they cannot afford to fight without the Anivia uh, providing any sort of damage, especially against the double eighty carries. Um, Dragon's not going to be up for another probably two minutes, two and a half minutes. So this is just going to allow them to push down the mid lane. No Anivia there to stop the immediate push. There's not a lot of wave clear on their side right now. And they're actually going to go in, catching yeah. out Ariana Jason. 
knowing those recalls were coming out, they knew they had the advantage. And that's so much damage onto the Jinx. They're going to try and turn this around, but that turret is gone now. So if they're going to fight, they're going to be doing it just in the open here. That's so much damage. The pulling hitting on every shot. Beautiful oh. ultimate from Bard. The positioning worked out. The box was there for when they came out of the stasis, and now they're so low. Chains. Barely gonna make it out alive, dodging the Nidalee Spear to save his life here. And if you does have that ultimate or that passive available, but Bard taken down by the Ezreal shot and Tosh gonna be finished up here as well. Actually, a very bloody team fight again from these two teams. And Iron Sheep they looking to so not let this. They were so bloodthirsty. Man, the fight's still going on. Iron Sheep wants this kill so badly. Yeah, Can't not gonna it. back away. Finally, he's going. No, he's actually gonna survive here. That heal from the passive Iron Sheep is now on the run. Anivia gonna land the stun there. And oh! the old super mega death rocket from deep from Jinx gonna what land is, and pick up what? the kill. Fist! These teams are so bloodthirsty! First, Amazon Prime, they win the fight after the great, great combination of um, Tosh flashing into the middle of the enemy team when Tane's kind of set his team up to die right there. <laughs> he locked down four of his own team members in the alternate, so when Tosh flashed in, put the box down, they're all going to be hitting those walls. Um, but then after that, they've effectively won the fight. Back away. You cannot hope to dive the Anivia and the Gragas. It just can't happen, but they continue to try to do it and they lost three members in that two members in that alone Then they tried to when and then as they were trying to escape they didn't, they didn't just flat-out leave They tried to continue looking for picks and that's what it cost them when Jinx threw out an ultimate They're just gonna go for another fight yeah, and speaking of picks there, Anivia landing that wall perfectly to corner toss, and that's threat going to be going down. Gonna try and twist and advance into it, but there's no follow-up there. No one is available here. That red buff is on Jinx, so she's able to kite this Maokai effectively here. Gonna twist and advance in again, but there's the ultimate from Drog. It's gonna be saving Jinx. The stasis gonna prevent Anivia, though. The, the ultimate from Ezreal will get her in the end. And that's gonna be a triple kill on to Ezreal as uh, Grogus is cleaned up as well. And that's gonna be the dragon going over red side. Yeah, not, they, didn't, they just didn't have, they didn't just have Mundo there. That was effectively a 4v5. And they only got the, they only got a kill onto Krappa. I think Tosh died as well, right there. But their focus was just, they just didn't have any focus. That's what I'm trying to say. They, they were splitting their damage across multiple members when they should have just focused on one person at a time. And that's kind of the re reason why they lost the fight. That and they didn't have the front line. There was no yeah, move. Without that, teleport, without that teleport available, good track of the timer from the red side here. That's going to cost them the fight and a mid lane inner turret as well. So, I mean, pushing ever forward, we remember earlier how much damage was on the inner turret in the top lane. Oh, the man. base is starting to be compromised here. Dow Diesel has a rod of agents. So that makes me think that he's building for late game. Yeah, perhaps uh, seeing how even the scores are right now, uh, perhaps encouraging himself to go a little bit more late game oriented. I'm not sure they're going to be able to win in the late game though, because I mean, just so many yeah. hyper, <laughs> hyper carries for oh, the late game. Another really close ultimate by I Love Llamas to take away Leech's blue buff. But like, yeah, like yeah. you said, they really can't hope to win the late game against the Jinx and the Nivea, but oh, they're gonna go for the fight. Good anyway. zoning there. The, <laughs> the missile journey not gonna be enough to get him out of there in time. That's gonna be so much damage. I never thought I'd see a Gragas tank for, but Mundo doing that right now not gonna be enough. It's actually gonna cost him his life even with that ultimate running, as that's just so much damage available. All four members were there. Nidalee in tow as well now. That's going to be the siege starting up on this middle uh, lane inhibitor curve. With this double he has a lot of potential. That's so much damage on Atosh though. The wall again from Anivia zoning into a kill for Jinx. 
Well, I'm just so impressed yeah. by those Anivia walls. Zoni creating opportunities for the rest of her team multiple times now. And those kills, I mean, again, this effectively prevented the siege from going on any further. Might have saved them in mid lane inhibitor turret here. And this is this is so this is just like a completely opposite game uh, from game one. These teams are so close. Where in the last game, you just saw Amazon Amazon absolutely destroying Amazon Prime in every single team fight, and that just shows. That just goes to shows how much the team comp is going to matter against in this in these two teams. When these two teams play against each other, the team comp is really going to matter because it's going to dictate how well they do in the team fights. You saw Amazon Prime have a really bad team fighting composition last game, and they just got rolled. This time, they have a really nice team comp fighting composition, and they're fighting back. They're effectively going even and, until they get caught out, just like that. Yeah, unfortunately that will be Lucian going down in the top lane. We saw him do a lot of damage to that Mundo as he's just now getting his resistances built up here in his items, but uh, it's going to be the split push again from Maokai, creating so much pressure in those side lanes all throughout this game here, uh, forcing Jinx to react going down to that bottom lane. He's looking to actually try and zone her away, and he effectively will do so. With that Nidalee and Ezreal hanging around in the jungle, Jinx not wanting to play it too risky here. They're just gonna rotate to the bottom lane, but without H Cow, they really can't afford to fight. Just stay safe until he joins your team. And actually, he's headed to the top lane, H Cow, just to clear out that top minion wave. Nope, making his way downtown, walking fast. <laughs> But he's not. But he's not homebound. He's not homebound. <laughs> oh man, that song is so good. <laughs> We're gonna oh, see man. actually oh, arcane leads forward. That's so much damage. The egg is available. I do believe and that's gonna be the ignite thrown down on Azrael. Azrael going down. Gonna get the kill credit over to the astronaut Jason again. That's gonna be a lot of damage coming out. The follow-up chase from Mundo is gonna be giving people the business here, but teleporting right into the thick of things. This Maokai is gonna be able to soak up a lot of damage. That is the egg pop popped from Anivia here. So now playing for blood if they choose to stick around any longer. That is uh, a blue buff on to Jinx now, so she's gonna be toggling, keeping that Q toggled on all day, and they're gonna opt to just shove right up on this mid lane, and they're recalling in the dragon pit area the wall from Anivia zoning them out again. Beautiful placement from that wall, and that's gonna be an inhibit or a, an inner turret in the mid lane for their trouble as they look to rotate up to the top lane inner turret as well. Those minions, they're not a lot of minions, but possibly enough to create pressure. Yeah, they'll just be able to rotate over the top lane, and they may not be able to- Oh, they're gonna go for the fight! They're gonna engage! Yeah, it's gonna be Maokai and Pog being uh, that active there, and that's gonna be immediately an enemy going down again. That egg not available this time around, and there's Jinx locked up by the Twisted Advance. That's gonna be Jinx going down as well from the swipe. Unfortunately, the uh, ultimate from Bard not landing onto anybody this time. I think that's the first time I've seen this Bard not uh, land a skill shot perfectly here. But that could be the most critical skill shot of the game as now it looks like they're going to rotate to trying to take this Baron here. They yeah, and right now, down. all we have are just three, uh, two tanks and a support trying to fight against this team. This is just really poor planning and they might be able to get this kill. No, they can't. HK was so low. He needs to be careful. No life steal for himself right now. Just the 3% from the Doran's Blade. He's got to be really careful and this is going to be a kill going on. That is yeah, gutsy play from Iron Sheep there. He did get himself in range, but wasn't able to get the smite off in time. And that's going to be just two kills for nothing there as the Baron went down as well. A good, a good effort there trying to fight that off, but not able to do so in the end. So uh, after that great rotation, they're sweeping out some objectives. They actually lose a perhaps more critical objective in that Baron. Uh. Double last whisper completed on both the Ezreal and the Lucian, so they're going to be really, really strong uh, in these upcoming team fights. And the thing is, there's not a lot of armor being built either, so they're just going to be ripping through people in these fights. Yeah, I, I would have been really, I would have been really happy if Krapow was playing a top laner that builds the 
Black Cleaver. <laughs> because he would synergize so well with his team. Yeah, absolutely. That would have been really good in this competition. You know, I'm actually surprised to see that Mungo not go for the Spirit Visage since we did see... I mean, there is certainly a lot of HP available. We see Nidalee sitting on that needlessly large rod. Uh, I'm, I'm surprised to not see that to get that extra uh, passive with his just overall regeneration. The shit. thing, the thing uh, is, they're just so scared of the AD from Isle of Llamas and uh, H-Scout that they, they need to respect it. If the if he built the MR, then he wouldn't have finished the um, armor, and that means he just wouldn't have been able to survive immediately. You can dodge the Nidalee Spears, but you can dodge the auto attacks. Yeah, that's certainly a good point. Showing a lot of respect for that. I'm just, uh, I'm just a little concerned. Going for the war mobs right out, uh, just to get the like flat HP. There's so much damage since this is a double AD composition. They're gonna have a lot of sustained damage to just throw, whittle you down, whittle that HP down a, a bit by bit here. And it looks like they were looking to try and rotate top again, but thinking better of it since they didn't have the minions available they could effectively with all those five members there they could just go blow on that uh, <laughs> inner turret but didn't want to risk that without the minions so it's gonna have to just uh, go back clear clear up their buffs out of their jungle get that onto Ezreal and Lucian respectively and uh, just group again in this top lane as Nokai will be bringing those minions with him and unfortunately the blue side on the complete opposite side of the map they do know they're there as well yeah, so this I'm not is... sure exactly. They might just lose this um, inner turn on the top side. Yeah, this is just really poor rotation on the part of Amazon and Amazon. They're just effectively giving this tower up. A bard can maybe save it with his ultimate, but in, he's not going to use it instead. And they're actually going to find Tosh. Could this be the turn on for them to kick out the Thresh? No, they don't take that Thresh. Another Nivea while creating a pick on a Thresh. I've seen that so many times this game. The Nidalee Spear does chunk out more than half of the hit points on Jinx, but she's going to be able to just run away. And now the siege begins in the top lane, but there's no Baron buff anymore. There's only four members, and Tane's so low, but there's no more globals available as that Ezreal ultimate is already down. So they're going to be forced to back away here, and are just going to give up the rest of their Baron buff and a kill on the Thresh for nothing effectively in that top lane, aside from uh, that initial turret that they just out-rotated for. And now we've now we've just come back to the waiting game. Can Amazon Prime take the small lead that they have? It's about a six thousand gold lead in their favor. Can they take this and push these objectives down? Dragon in completely in their favor. If they take this fourth dragon, it's gonna be so good for them. Otherwise. This is where Amazon Hamazon is going to start scaling to their true power. Jinx, she's working on uh, Mercurial, Scepter, Mercur Mercurial Scimitar very, uh, right now. So the lockdown that's going to be coming out from really only Crap Pile is gone. There's, no, there's really no way to lock down this Jinx. And when she finishes that item, she already has the QSS, so it's already going to be impossible to lock down the Jinx. But once she gets the extra AD, it's just going to be extra threat on top of that. Yeah, and as we, we mentioned they earlier, seeing the... They'll need to rely on Dao Diesel to either poke her out with the spears oh. or Isle of Llamas to do enough damage with the ultimate. And being AD, it's not going to really be that huge. Like that, that was like no damage right there. That was a yeah, tickle. absolutely. And we still have the, as we mentioned earlier, the prioritizing of armor over MR here. That's because we saw the locket rush from this bard, uh, trying to get that passive aura for a little extra magic against everybody. Good wall from Nivea there. They're looking to start this off here, but they're right by the base cage to disengage. Did they too? And looks like they're going to have to here. Uh, they do catch out a lot of damage onto that metal guy, but he's not the target you want that damage going on. He's so much damage onto Ezreal, though. A good hook onto Jinx, and she's almost going to go down to the piercing right, but the heal going to keep her alive. And there's the ultimate, the calling coming out. Again, the Nivea wall zoning them into the ultimate for so long. They are going to get Lucian for it, but that's another two members going down as there's so much pressure onto this turret. Not gonna go down is uh, Nidalee here. The heal gonna keep herself alive. And there is the ace coming out just under the spirit. Two members barely dodging and, the last bit of that aggro. And right there, the team the team fights and um, the team, they were fighting so nicely. They weren't 
No one was dying. They were poking each other back and forth until the Mundo decides to walk into the other side of the wall. He was the first one to die. And then Gragas and the Jinx both flash over the wall, just completely disregarding positioning whatsoever. And that's effectively where the fight was won for Amazon Prime. They were getting these kills because of the huge mistakes from Amazon Amazon right there. They had no reason to flat to go over that wall. They cannot fight without the Mundo being alive. You have the Anivia. You can stall the game out for as long as you want with her ultimate, but instead they decided they wanted to fight in a bad situation after you've lost your front line, after they still have their 80 carries, dealing damage not to the tank anymore, but to their but to your own damage dealers. You're, the Jinx is powerful late game, but not 2v1 against 280 carries powerful. Yeah, absolutely. We're going to see, picking up on that rotation, they're actually going to get the Dragon. So they will prevent this from going into a critical uh, situation here as far as the Dragon count is concerned. And pick up their second of the game as well, getting them ever closer to that critical third dragon for the bonus move speed and it actually looks like they're trying to set up some wards around baron here to contest that but with those in, uh empowered minions in the mid lane there's going to be so much pressure i'm not sure they're going to be able to effectively contest this baron because those super minions are just going to charge down right into their base yeah and, and you tell he's so weak right now compared to the maokai frozen heart would have been such a good item onto him instead he went for the random and they're actually going to catch out actually this the fight yeah, there's the engagement, there's the boss thrown down so much a uh, uh, AoE there to zone people out, and that's going to be Mundo going down first. How many times can you send that followed by Gragas even? Uh, so those are all the tanking is gone. The carry's still available here, but uh, Nivea doesn't have mana to do anything here. The egg is down, so she's going to fall immediately. There's Jinx getting caught out by the Twisted Advance. This could be the end here. His tank's caught out as well by the Nidalee. He's and gonna it's going to be good. No, he's gonna go down as well. That's the ace. So, I mean, yes, they're, they're just gonna face tank this up and finish this out. Wow, great! I mean, those team fights. Yeah, and Mundo and Gragas, they got caught out right there, which they cannot do this way into this game. There's, it's so, it's so devastating to get picked off after like the 35 minute mark, 40 minute mark, because dead timers are so long, they can effectively end game off of that. They just came up as their nexus exploded. That was that was the length of their death timer. And they really cannot afford to do that, especially without their team there to immediately back them up. We saw the Maokai and the Maokai and the Lucian in the mid lane. So they effectively could have won the fight if they were grouped as five to collapse on the three members that were engaging onto them, but they weren't together and they weren't able to fight effectively. Both the tanks were taken out. Then you saw Leech out of mana very quickly, and then he was just caught out by Tosh, flashing in, bringing Dow Diesel to the Anivia, and that was just game over. End of the story. Yeah, the I want to highlight very quickly here as well. I love Llamas. 10, 3, and 10 on Ezreal did 10k more damage than anyone on the opposing team. That is so insane. He, talking, we spoke at the start of the game about when they need to turn on. That mid lane Ezreal turned on. <laughs> and he didn't turn yeah. back off for the entire game. So that that's going to be Amazon Prime evening up the score 1-1. One to one. We're going to game 3, guys. And this is this is going to be fun. Yeah, here we go. Definitely stay tuned here as we go into game 